Hi students and parents. My name is Jared and I am a teacher at Yola. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm excited that you came along to listen to me talking about the A2 key speaking test um, and some common mistakes that students can make during the test um, and how best to avoid them. The idea is to give you some tips and tricks to help you do the very best you can when you do the test. Now, um, I have a lot of information to share, so I want you to listen very carefully. And at the end of the video, I'm going to ask three questions, okay? And what you can do is comment below with your answers to those three questions to stand a chance of winning a prize from Yola. Okay, so please listen carefully. So the A2 key speaking test is split into two parts, all right? In the first part, we have an interlocutor and a candidate, you, all right? And the interlocutor will first ask some questions about yourself. Easy questions like, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, where do you live? Okay. Uh, and in the next part, um, in the next phase of this part, the interlocutor will ask questions with a little more detail. So they will ask questions like, um, why do you study English? Um, what do you enjoy most about studying English? And then the last question will always be something like, um, tell me more about, mm. so for example, tell me more about studying English. Tell me more about your favorite hobby, okay? And uh, your goal is to uh, provide answers to all of these questions. Now, what are some of the common mistakes that can happen and how do we fix them? The first common mistake that can happen is when students give one word answers, for example, by saying yes or no, all right? So how do we fix that? Well, my advice to you is to practice at home giving full uh, sentences as your answers. So for example, when you're asked, what is your name? The full sentence would be, my name is Jared. Okay. So you've got to practice giving full sentences and avoid one word answers. Um, the next common mistake that can occur is when students don't really listen carefully to the questions that they're being asked and they need help to understand some of the questions. Um, so don't Ask for help by saying what or huh, okay? Rather be polite and ask full questions. So for example, you could say something like, sorry, could you please repeat that? Or can you say that again, please? Um, it's always best to be polite and to ask full questions during the speaking test. Um, sometimes uh, when asked a question like, tell me something about, hmm, students will give one simple sentence as an answer. Now, it's important to keep in your mind that really what you should provide is between three to four sentences for your answer. How do we do that? Well, we add extra information to our answers, okay? Um, so anything from explanations, why you feel the way you feel, um, more ideas about what you think. Um, you can also provide some examples of what you think. That way, you are creating more sentences with your answer. Some other things to keep in mind during the test are that if you um, don't remember every single detail correctly, that is okay. This is not a job interview, um, and it is something that is designed just to test your speaking. So if you get some pieces of information wrong, it's okay, don't stress about it. Um, the other thing not to stress too much about is the other candidates around you. It's very possible that the other candidates will have stronger English than you and be able to speak better. Relax, your job is not to copy them and to be like them. Your job is to be yourself and to show your level of speaking English. Um, the first part of the test is designed for you to help you relax and to talk about yourself in a way that is comfortable and, uh, and best. Um, now the next part of the test is a little more interesting um, and it involves you working with a partner or other candidates together, okay? So what happens 
is that you are given five pictures about one topic and together with the other candidates you discuss and talk about the topic together okay um, sometimes the interlocutor could step in and ask a question to help the discussion go along but generally you are speaking alone with your other candidates um, after that, the interlocutor will ask each candidate a specific question about the topic that you discussed. Okay, so what are some of the common problems that can occur during this part of the test? Um, what can happen a lot is that candidates will speak too much about one picture or will focus on one, uh, one or two pictures um, for most of their talking time. Now, it's important to remember that there are five pictures total that you need to talk about and you need to talk about each one of them okay um, so what can be useful is when you're talking with your other candidates and discussing things you lead on to the next picture so you can say something like what about this picture or let's go on to the next one all right your aim is to talk about all the pictures keep that in your brain um, the next problem that can occur is when a candidate doesn't really share but stays quiet and shy during the, um, the second part of the test. Um, now, you need to remember that it is important that you participate. Um, you need to remember that like 50% of this test is listening and 50% is speaking. All right. Now, how do we ensure that we are fulfilling that uh, requirement? Well, you can ask questions to your partner or your candidates. OK, you can ask for their ideas um, or their opinions. So first you can share your own and then you can say something like, what do you think about that? Or um, what do you think when dot dot dot? OK, so the idea is that. We are trying to create natural conversation. We're sharing our ideas and we are asking our partners um, for their ideas. Now, the next common mistake is a little bit um, bad, but uh, sometimes students will use inappropriate language and rude language when disagreeing with their partners or other candidates. This is a big, big no-no. We have to be polite, kind, and friendly with our candidates that we work with. Um, even if you disagree with someone, there are ways to disagree in a nice way. So for example, you can listen to someone's opinion and you can say, really? Well, I think this, okay? You could say something like, your idea is great, but I prefer this, okay? So there are ways to disagree. Um, in a way that is kind and friendly. Now, some things to keep in mind, some extra tips for you. The topics that usually come up during this part of the test are about family, living in the city, uh, school, hobbies, going on holidays, okay? So it's good to try and practice these topics at home. Maybe you can sit with your friends or family members um, to practice these subjects. Um, the other thing, is uh, to use pictures to help you talk. So go on to Google, search one of these topics that I just mentioned, look at some pictures and try and ask yourself questions about the pictures and then answer them. So you can use question words like what, where, when, how and why, All right? Um, this will help you practice getting some information from pictures before you take the test. Um, it is extremely important, super, super important, that in the second part of the test, you listen to other candidates and you also share your own ideas, all right? The idea is to keep the conversation going so that there's a flow and you don't just get stuck and you don't know how to proceed further. Remember that you are being assessed on appropriate language and interactive strategy, so how you talk with others. You're not being tested on your ideas, so you don't have to worry about having the right idea or the wrong idea. All answers are okay. All right. 
Um, when the test is complete, the examiner will give you your score based on the, on the following five categories. Grammar and vocabulary, pronunciation, interactive communication, and global achievement. Oh, that's only four categories, sorry. Four categories for you to be tested on. Um, and those marks will make up your whole speaking test. Now, if you've been listening carefully, um, I'm going to give you three questions that I would like you to answer. So just type in your answers below to stand a chance of winning a prize from Yola. Um, the first question is, what should we do um, to avoid giving one word answers? How, what do we practice so that we do not give one word answers? The next question is, what do we do when we disagree with another candidate? How do we politely disagree with them? And the last question is, uh, true or false? You are being tested on your ideas and the details that you mention that have to be correct. Okay, I'll ask that one again. True or false? You are being tested on your ideas and correct information. Okay, so I want you to uh, go ahead and write those answers down in your um, in, in the comments below and uh, definitely stay tuned for more videos like this. Uh, at Yola, we are working very hard to um, uh, give you more lessons and helpful tips to use in your English studies at home. Um, and if you want any more e extra information, you can call the following number. You can call us on 028-628-58080. I'm going to repeat that one more time for you. 028-628-58080. Okay, or you can go to www.yola.vn for further information. So comment your answers below, include your names, and you can stand a chance of winning a 7 million VND discount for one of our online courses. That's very exciting. Go for it. You have nothing to lose. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.